Okay, here we go. Let's talk about some rookies that were really good in their first year, but they fell off after that. Let's start off with Willene Rosario. When I saw this name, I thought, wow, I completely forgot about this guy. This guy was really good in 2012 with the Rockies. Hit for a lot of power that year. Hit 270, had a 312 on base. The slugging is what sticks out the most at 530. 28 home runs on the year. He finished fourth in Rookie of the Year voting that year. Unfortunately for him, he was going up against a lot of beef in the National League when it came to rookies, most notably Bryce Harper. You had other guys in there like Todd Frazier. You had Anthony Rizzo as well. So, you know, Wileen Rosario was one of those rookies that just wasn't getting a whole lot of attention. And if you go take a look here on CBS Sports, here is an article from September of 2012 titled The Rockies, Wiley Rosario, maybe the best rookie you're not hearing enough about. But after this year, a lot of people were thinking, okay, this is going to be one of the next best power hitters in the game. You know, considering that year, he was second among rookies in home runs, only behind Mike Trout, who was amazing that year. Unfortunately for Rosario, he fell off after that, after getting that fourth place finish in Rookie of the Year voting. Now, he was okay in 2013 batting average improved but the power numbers started to go down and they just continued to dwindle after that and another thing that didn't help Rosario all that much was his defense as a catcher he was pretty abysmal if you take a look here negative 18 defensive runs saved now he had three stolen base runs saved so he had a pretty good arm but other than that there wasn't really a whole lot going for him the framing wasn't good at all negative 17 so when the bat fell off everything just fell off speaking of power how about Daniel Polka? Remember when Polka came up in 2018 and he was just mashing everything with the White Sox? It was fun to watch. If we actually go to his minor league numbers, right? He was with the Diamondback system. He was with the Twins system. Ended up landing with the White Sox in 2018. And up to this point, he was hitting a lot of home runs in the minor leagues. He got a chance with the White Sox. And that year, he was just so good, man. He was hitting everything. Take a look here. Now, the batting average was low at 240. On base was very low at 294 but had the 484 slugging 27 home runs and in 2018 those 27 home runs actually tied for first among all rookies in major league baseball only tied with miguel andujar so he finished fifth in rookie of the year voting that year again a fun season for him but eventually the plate discipline issues you know the bat to ball skills were being exposed and he just completely fell off and another thing that held him back too was the defense if we go take a look at his defensive numbers in the outfield in 2018 they were pretty bad right negative 14 outs above average negative 10 defensive runs saved so this is a guy, you know, once the power fell off, there just wasn't really going to be anything going for him. But again, you know, that was a fun time, you know, just hitting all the home runs. Uh, he did end up going to the KBO for a little bit. He ended up uh, going to a couple other organizations as well. He was with my Red Sox not too long ago. He was with the Mets. He was with the Nationals after that. You know, so could we maybe see Paul at some point down the road? My guess is probably not, but uh, that was a fun rookie season for Polka. For the next one, we got to go back in time a little bit to 2003 and talk about Jay Wong. So I'm sure I just triggered a whole bunch of flashbacks for Mets fans all across the land. Now, you might not remember Jay Wong. So this was during that awkward phase for the Mets where they were a few years removed from that World Series appearance in 2000. And they were a few years behind that time where they brought in Carlos Beltran, Carlos Delgado, Pedro Martinez. So you might not remember him, but he was very good in 2003. If we go take a look at the numbers, ERA at a 3.82. FIP was at a 3.93, almost had 200 innings, but after this, he just completely fell off. Now, the problem with So is he wasn't really much of a strikeout pitcher, so I think that's what ended up catching up to him. He ended up having a couple of more seasons with the Mets. Now, he was actually decent in 2005, started 14 games, but he was running into some injuries that year. He ended up going to the Dodgers later on, ended up going to the Rays a little bit after that, so he just never really got himself on track, but this was a name I remember you know when it popped up I'm like wow yeah I remember him he was on a couple of the video games back in the day so hey Mets fans Jay Wong so hey let me know some comments down below in the comments do you remember Jay Wong so but let's move on to the next guy
For the next one, we're going to go back in time again, but not too far this time. Let's go to 2011 and talk about Alexi Agondo. Remember those Rangers teams in 2010 and 2011 made it to back-to-back -back World Series. Heartbreaker in 2011, losing to the Cardinals. They were a strike away two separate times. Couldn't get the job done. I'm not even a Rangers fan, and that broke my heart. My goodness. But Alexi Agondo, he was very good in 2011. Now, before that season, you know, there were talks of maybe him being the closer. You had Neftali Feliz that year but he ended up going to the rotation had a sensational year if you take a look here 169 innings pitch had 29 starts 31 games overall ERA at a 3.51 FIP just a little bit higher but very good season for him he was an all-star but after this he just kind of fell off a little bit you know, he was having a lot of injuries he did go back into the rotation in 2013 had 18 starts not bad numbers overall but again he, he just couldn't stay healthy couldn't really stay on the field he ended up going to my Red Sox in 2015, went to the Braves in 2016. He actually went to the KBO in 2017, actually did okay there. Then he came back, tried to make a comeback with Cleveland in 2018, but that was pretty much it for Alexi Agondo's career. But that first season in 2011, he was very good. Had a fan graph war of 3.5 that season. There were a lot of hopes for Agondo, but in the end, he just fell off. Up next, let's talk about Jared Parker. This is a sad one to talk about because Jared Parker was a promising pitcher that was coming up, but unfortunately, injuries ended his career. But this guy was so good in the first couple of seasons he pitched. He was actually with the Diamondbacks before getting traded to the A's in the Trevor Cahill trade. Remember the Diamondbacks, they were going through a bit of a window of competitiveness and they tried to bolster their rotation with Trevor Cahill and Jared Parker was the big piece that went back to the A's and he was so good in the two seasons now 2012 this was his best season overall went 13 and 8 29 starts over 180 innings pitched had an era at 3.47 3.43 on the FIP. He finished fifth in Rookie of the Year voting. He pitched well once again in 2013, almost 200 innings pitched, ERA at a 3.97. FIP climbed up a little bit to 4.40. But after this, this is when the, all the injuries started coming around. He had two Tommy Johns. He fractured his elbow twice. And after that, he basically called it a career. He spent probably like five years trying to make a comeback at this point. And so if you go take a look here, he ended up saying, your arm will tell you when it's done and it did it just sucks being somewhat younger ended up tweeting out in 2018 saying it's true I'm done playing baseball but life has so much more planned for me and already in the works he ended up uh talking to Susan Slusser ended up telling her that he wanted to work in the health industry serving as a rehab coordinator for players returning from injury so again you know this is a sad one because this was a guy that was really good in that rookie season looked like he was going to be one of the next best pictures in the game unfortunately hey you know what the arm just gave out but he was electric those first couple of years. Hey, everyone. Before I get to the rest of the video, just want to go over today's sponsor, and that's BetUS. We got a full slate of game props here today. You got a bunch of games to choose from. What I'm going to go with, I'm looking at the Padres and the Brewers. I'm seeing the Padres at plus 135. I think that's a good value pick. Based off of the matchup today, Dylan Cease on the bump going up against Wade Miley. I do like Wade Miley, but I like the Padres offense a little bit more right now. They're seventh overall currently in WRC plus their bats are looking really good I like the offense I like the pitching from Dylan Cease I see a Padres win here so if I come on over here and uh, make a responsible bet that is the key at the end of the day if I drop in 50 bucks well that would win me 67 dollars and 50 cents I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna make that bet uh, that to me I think is going to win me some cash. So head on over to BetUS. The link is down below in the description on your first three deposits. You get a 125% bonus. Definitely take advantage of that. But without further ado, let's get to the rest of the video. Up next, we got Mike Aviles. Not going to lie, this brings up bad memories for me. Not because he was a bad player, but he was on that 2011 Red Sox team that had an absolute meltdown in September of that year that caused them to miss the playoffs. I still remember one picture in particular where Mike Aviles is looking onto the field as the Orioles walk them off in game 162. That's the one image I'll always have 
of Mike Avila's. But he was good for the Red Sox in 2011 after being traded over. But he was very good in his rookie season in 2008 with the Royals. Just a very good hitter overall. Hit 325, a 354 on base, a 480 slugging, a 121 OPS plus, over 102 games. He finished fourth in Rookie of the Year voting. Now, after this, though, he just never really got back to those numbers. Now, he was always a pretty solid utility player after this. If you go take a look at all of the different positions that he played, he played everywhere on the field. He even played a couple of games at first base when he was with the Marlins in 2017, mostly playing second base. He played some third. He played some short played all three spots in the outfield as well so that's why he was able to hang around for so long in his career but that season in 2008 in 2008 offensively he just never got back to those numbers he was very good in his rookie season he got drafted seventh overall in the 1998 draft and just a few years later he came up and he was tearing the cover off the ball hit 315 with a 407 on base a 500 slugging a 134 ops plus over 107 games he was very good defensively had a 12.8 defense that year he actually had the highest fan graph war among rookies that season with a 5.0 a phenomenal season and actually in the awards i can't believe that he didn't win rookie of the year jason jennings ended up getting rookie of the year i mean he was okay like he pitched a lot of innings that year but you know this is kind of before really the analytics took over he had the record of 16 and 8 the era was high at a 4.52 but i don't know i just think austin kearns man he was so good that season but after that he just kind of fell off like he did put up some decent numbers a couple of years later 2006 had 24 home runs 18 in 2005 16 in 2007 with the nationals he bounced around a little bit yankees cleveland miami but he never came close to those numbers in his rookie season he was phenomenal that season he just never got quite there again Speaking of Rookie of the Year, let's talk about a guy that won Rookie of the Year that same year, actually, and that's Eric Hinsky, winning Rookie of the Year in the American League in 2002, had a very good season that year, hit 279 with a 365 on base, a 481 slugging, 845 OPS overall, Fangraph war of a 4.8, very good season in 2002. Now, he did have some decent seasons after this. He put together a couple of solid campaigns, 2000. 2008, he was pretty good. Had a couple of good seasons in 05 and 06, but like Austin Kearns, never fully got back to what he was doing that rookie season. So Eric Hinsky, you know, he bounced around a little bit. He was with my Red Sox. He was with the Rays. He was with the Braves. 2013 was his last season with the Diamondbacks. He also won a couple of World Series. Won one with the Red Sox in 2007, and then he won one with the Yankees in 2009. But again, that rookie season, that was definitely his best season. We can't do this video without talking about Miguel Andujar. I still remember that 2018 season. Yankee fans were so high on him after a great rookie season. He actually would have won Rookie of the Year if it wasn't for a guy named Shohei Otani. I don't know if you know him or not. He's pretty good. But Andujar was great that season for the Yankees in their lineup. Overall, hit 297, a 328 on base, a very good slugging at 527, 27 homers, 92 RBIs. Uh, but after that, everything came crashing down. He didn't even come close to putting up those numbers like he did in 2018. I mean, nothing has been good for him since then. You know, he's in the Oakland A's organization right now. I mean, let's see if he can get himself together, but I don't know. That, that rookie season, I think, will end up being the best season of his career. And last but not least, let's talk about Rick and Keel. A bit of a sad story, but there's a great story intertwined with it. But let's go back to the beginning of his career. He was drafted out of high school, and just two years later, he was pitching in the major leagues. His rookie season was in 2000 at only 20 years old. This guy was so good in 2000. 31 games, 30 starts, ERA at a 3.50, had 10 strikeouts per nine. I mean, you're kidding me at 20 years old? He's throwing this many innings, getting that many strikeouts. That's unbelievable. And actually, he finished second in Rookie of the Year voting that year, only behind Raphael Forcall on the Braves. But 
the infamous story with Rick Ann Keel in the postseason in 2000. He developed a case of the yips. If we go back to those couple of games that he threw against the Braves and the Mets, he walked six in two and two thirds against the Braves. And then against the Mets, they tried him again and inning in a third and he walked five. So Rick and Keel after this was never really able to recover in his career. You know, he pitched in 2001, but just everything was all over the place. He had nine walks per nine and that was pretty much the end of his pitching career but a few years later he attempted a comeback but this time as a hitter playing in the outfield and he actually did have some success in 2008 he had a 1.7 fan graph war it wasn't great defensively but with the bat he was pretty solid over 120 games he had 264 with a 337 on base a 506 slugging had 25 home runs i went to a spring training game where rick and keel actually homered to dead center field i'm like oh my my goodness well this is amazing Ricky and Keel he definitely turned into a good story uh after converting to a position player but same thing again he just wasn't really able to keep it going he did hang around for a few more years but either way making that change you know that late in his career that's just a phenomenal story just unfortunately you know the pitching didn't work out and this guy had electric stuff good velocity so unfortunate but Rick and Keel he tops this list for me, but that's all I have here. Let me know down below in the comments who are some other players I missed out on. I know there's a bunch of them, so let me know down below in the comments. But if you can on the way out, hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll talk to you next time.